Okay, so for this next tutorial, you know, in my classes, I always try to um, maybe redundant or just beat the crap out of an idea, but <laughs> um, I try to think of ways that the technical stuff gets repeated or supported so that you can see how one thing is connecting with another, some concept, some uh, technical idea, something like that. Um, so, you know, one way I do this is by looking at the, the way we use kind of a grid structure. Is a grid structure speaks to structure. Um, computer programs have a lot of structure with them. Um, we talk about images. Images have X and Y coordinates. Um, and so, you know, early on in the class, we did a grid assignment um, where we just made um, uh, tiles, you know, so like kitchen tiles, right? We tried to create uh, ornate patterns using these different shapes. Um, but the, the concept was how can I generate some X and Y coordinates to place uh, a rectangle across the screen. In fact, one of the tutorials, I even looked at just how to take a line across the screen and repeat it all the way down the length of it without having to type the function line over and over and over and over again. Um, one of the more absurd tutorials I've ever done. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. Um, so in this one, I'm still coming back to these concepts, but it, I, it was interesting in class today that maybe this seems um, different because now we get an image, uh, a very complicated, or I would say these are quite interesting, so I'm using uh, a couple photographs by the uh, photographer Platon. I think I'm saying that uh, correctly. Um, it does these very Richard Avedon-esque kind of portraits, and if you don't know how Richard Avedon is, go look that up as well. Great photographer, interesting character. Um, so uh, what I found uh, very exciting about this was, uh, uh, first of all, I used Google's um, AI to my advantage where I was just looking for portrait images. And of course, once I selected one, it tried to feed me other images similar in nature, uh, which helped me get to this subset of images by the, this photographer. Um, and I was trying to find um, ones that might match up a little bit. I did take them into Photoshop and made sure that they were basically the same size. They didn't match up perfectly by any means. And that's kind of the whole point here. Um, but uh, I, I made this joke in class, but if you, I'm not sure if I lost a couple students at the end that had some connectivity problems, or if you're not in my class and you're watching this, the three images uh, are of um, Barack Obama, uh, George W. Bush, and oddly enough, um, uh, oh, now I'm, I'm blanking on uh, names, Christopher Walken. Sorry, I can't believe I'm, sorry, Christopher Walken. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot your name for a second. It's late here. Um, but the funny thing about the picture, maybe you'll see as I do the tutorials, he looks like a lot like Trump in the image. So um, two former presidents and some actor posed in such a way that he looks maybe a little bit like the, uh, the current uh, president. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and I'm just reloading the code. So every time it comes up with a different set of samples uh, from these, these three images that I've loaded to give me these uh, interesting and unique portraits every single time. Um, and this is just three images, right? I think <laughs> it's, it's uh, staggering actually, all the different um, variations that you get out of this. So I'm not going to show you exactly how to do the code to do this. And this is just one possible uh, solution. Um, there's lots of different ways that you could sample these images. But, but we're going to, the important part of this, the one thing that we haven't done is, well, now we have three images that we're dealing with. In essence, we have a list of images, and we have not uh, dealt with that syntax yet and that kind of data format. So that's what this tutorial is going to be about. Uh, so let's just go back to my, let's leave that for a second. And I have uh, just a blank um, setup here. Um, so the first thing I need to do is uh, get some images or get these images to work from. And on my desktop, I have a folder called Portraits. And here are these three images um, that I've downloaded. Okay, so portrait number three, number two, number one, they're all loaded in here. Um, and 
you know, I could do something where I would say, hey, image one equals um, load image, right? So I'm going to do that here in a minute. But um, what I want to do in my sketch is be able to tell the the code, in the code, I want to be able to tell the program to randomly select from this list of images. And again, you know, I could say image one, load image, and then I could say image two, and image three. Eventually, it's going to get stupid if I get to image 500, and, or sorry, 540, right? If I had a huge database of images, or if I had a huge just database of any kind of set of numbers. So this is where creating a list is very important. It's, it's a way of just creating one variable, identifying a list, and when we tweak the syntax a little bit so that we can tell it what to do. So let me, let's first just start with uh, some of the basics. So let's say let, and I'm just gonna call this IMG uh, equal, in fact, you know, let's, instead of IMG, let's call this pres. Right, so because we have two presidents and someone that looks kind of like the current president. <laughs> Uh, in this, so let pres equal, and so this is new. Uh, these two square brackets are a way of saying, uh, what I want to do is create what's called an array. It's just a fancy way to say a list. Right? Um, JavaScript allows us to say, well, I'm going to create a list, and I'm not going to put anything in it right now, and I'm not going to tell you how big or how long the list is. I'm just going to dump things into the list as I go along. But right now, I just have something that says, um, you know, here is this list itself. And because these are images, right, and we, uh, in the previous tutorial, I talked about we want to load images at the very beginning so that they're available to us as the program starts. So before any of this stuff starts running, we need to make sure we actually have the images loaded in the web, in the cloud, like into our, into our program um, so that we can use that. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, so this is where the, in fact, before I do that, let me do that. So let me shift over to this. Oh no, a spreadsheet. Um, so I'm just in numbers on, on the Mac side of things and I have this uh, table that I've created and um, the, um, the idea here is that we see two things. So index is the way that we count the list. Right, so the index value, and I actually have 20 items right in here uh, in the list, but the computer always starts counting at zero in these lists. So the first one would be index value or index number zero. Okay, um, and oh, I guess with the table, what we could call this is um, let uh, we'll just say x. Oops, let equal this list. So this, this is, I'm just putting this here as, as a way to make the connection, right? That you could put whatever name you wanted to in your little spreadsheet thing. And it just always wants to auto-format. It's a fun bug. All right, so, um, so we would create this um, array, and then we need to put the numbers in here. And these numbers, every time, so in this case, what I've done is I've just created a random number, right? That's all this is, is a random number generator. So 3.3, .3, blah, 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 these are in here. And so that I know how to access each one of those because I have a, a list called X, I would say, hey, give me the first number and the second number and the third number and the fourth number. And the way that I get those is by saying, give me index value zero, index value one. So you can see these are pairs, right? They're, they're coupled with each other. Um, it's a little confusing if you're coming from JavaScript. There's the other way to do these pairs. Um, but here we're using uh, the, this array. Um, so, uh, so the first one is z identified as zero or index zero. So anyways, this is, this is what we're going to do, except for we're going to say index value equals z uh, not a number. So index zero equals not 3.13, but it equals a picture of President Barack Obama, <laughs> right? The the portrait dot uh, or portrait dot JPEG or PNG or whatever it is. Okay, so that's the way this stuff's going to function. Let's go back to our, our code. So the way that we can do that, and there's several ways. I'm going to do this the long, simple way at the at the very beginning is to say President 
zero. So this is the first one in the list, and I'm going to say load image, just as I did in the other tutorial. And I'll put these little quote, single quotes. Oops, let's put that side for a minute. And I just need to put the name, portrait underscore one dot jpg. And let's see if this actually runs, if I don't run in any errors. So there's no errors. I don't see anything. It's not drawing anything yet. But it said, sure, I have a, um, a ray. Actually, someone had a question earlier in class. I'm wondering if this works. It does. That's pretty interesting. OK, so, so I was just testing to see if I could load um, something into the list um, not at the very beginning, so not the very first item, item 0, index 0. But uh, maybe this second one or the third one. And it, actually, JavaScript seems fine with that. You learn something every day. OK. So if you uh, are watching this, you're like, oh, what's he doing? You could do this with a for loop. I know, I know, I know. Um, uh, this is just, I just want to do this straightforward and simple. And do, so you know, be thorough, ask yourself, wait a minute, okay, so I want to have a list, I have a list, I want the first one in the list to be this one, and you could do it backwards, right, you could do portrait three, portrait two, I put these numbers on there just to help me, and there's another reason why I would do this, um, but for now, right, so I don't get any errors, and let's just go in here and say image, uh, Okay, so which prez, right? So I have a list of images. Well, which one of those? It's kind of like, give me that piece of paper, and you have three pieces of paper in your hand. I'm like, well, which one do you want? Do you want the first one, the second one, the third one, the one on top, the one in the middle, the one at the end? I want the first one, and I want to put it um, at zero, zero as far as the coordinates, right? So it draws this picture of Barack. Uh, over here uh, um, in the corner, right? Because I have the, the window width and the window height here. In the previous tutorial, again, since I've loaded these images, I could say, you know what? Let's again make the, the canvas that I'm drawing to pres dot zero, or sorry, uh, pres index zero. And I'm not, I keep doing the comma there. With and pres first one in the list index zero and dot height. So now I've made the canvas equal to whatever the size of this image is, and I scaled these down so that they would be the exact same size. Um, I could print that width if I wanted to to see whether you know what that size was. Um, you can see I've loaded that into each one of these. Um, or sorry, I've uh, configured this so that the, um, the width and the height are the same as the image. I just have the first one in there. Let's, in fact, let's check each one, make sure that they work, right? And if you were watching at the very beginning, isn't it so funny, these images, so this is the one with walking, except for the hair, right? He just, I don't know, kind of reminds me of Trumpy there. I don't know why. Um, so. Uh, so this is the first part of it, right? That we want to um, be able to select from this. But later on, and I'm not going to do this for the whole tutorial, but um, where I you know, get the individual chunks in place it like I had at the beginning. But I do want to get a random number in here. So this is one thing we haven't looked at. So if I say, um, if I just said, you know what, let's get a random three. Right, so this is creating a number. This is a function in here that says uh, random three gives me a number, and a number will help me identify which one of the images I want to get. And you can see I get a, uh, a an error because it says it's uh, uh, it didn't like the parameter. In fact, let's go back just so we can space it better. Right, so it expects a number, and it's getting a number, but it's not getting the right kind of number. So you can see this is 
index zero, this is index one, this is index two, but random, random three, this is not going to be zero, one, or two, it's gonna be 1.756 or 2.435, <laughs> right? We don't have those in the list. We don't have partial things loaded in here. We only have absolute images inside of that. So how do we deal with this? So let's just, I always find this easier to do it as a separate variable. So let's call, let's let i equal and That. In fact, you know what I'm going to do is uh, let's just put this at zero for now. And I'm going to say print uh, i just so we can see it, right? So random three, what kind of number does that give me? And you can see it's giving me a whole bunch. In fact, let's, uh, let's make this no loop. Right? 2.035. That's not going to help us. Uh, let's just keep running each time. 1.55. Right, so 0.6. These are not uh, whole numbers. So the way that we get that is a. F so we're we're going to put we're going to wrap a function around a function. So let's look at this. And I'm just going to space these so you can see it. So I have. Uh, int is the name of this function, which just means give me the integer or the whole number of whatever number I put in here. So it will, if the number is 2.45, it will round it down to be 2. If the number is 0 0.6, it will be 0. So you can see now when I reset this, I get 0 and 0 and 1 and 0 and 2, right? So I could just take this whole entire thing and paste it in here. I always just think it looks cleaner to just use a variable that I generate and then I just put i inside of here. Right? And so now when I do this, it will just randomly select from the images. Again, these are just three images. What if you had 100 or 1,000, right? So. And, and of course, these are images. You could, um, this is the way you would store random x, y coordinates. You know, it's kind of infinite here, but lists are very important when we start to get to some complexity of what we might want to do. Okay, so this is kind of one of the major concepts is using the array for the, the image itself. Um, it's getting late here, so I'm probably not gonna get to the last one tonight, but uh, um, tomorrow I will record the, the final one where we just look at using the get function to grab a chunk of an image as opposed to um, just getting the pixel value. And that's how we were able to make the, uh, um, this mosaic of uh, presidents and actor presidents <laughs> um, in, in the sketch that I referenced at the very beginning. So, um, so again, let's just recap. So we're using this new syntax. We're using these square brackets to tell a variable to identify it as a list. And then we're dumping um, uh, individual items into this. And again, we're using load image here. If we were creating a list, if I said let x um, be a list, I could go ahead and, and put those values in there as well, right? And I could. Um, just say x zero equals 10 or whatever I want to be in that list. Okay, happy coding.